Welcome to the You Decide podcast. I'm Dr. Tiffany. We are going to bring you stories of ordinary people who have chosen to live an extraordinary life outside of their comfort zones and into confidence, possibility, and certainty. You are just one decision away from living your most aligned life because let's get real. That's what we all want. Hey guys, today we have Miss Tara Argo. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of an overview about you, Miss Tara. Um, I met you 13 years ago. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, that's a long time. Right when you were still counseling. Yeah. That's how I met you. Yeah. When you were in the midst of all this awesome expansion and growth for your life, your life is all so much different than it was back then. Yeah, <laughs> really morphed. I know. Morphed. <laughs> it morphed. I know. So I'm going to just give a little bit of an overview for everybody so they have an idea okay. of who you are. And then we're going to really just dive into um, how animals have completely transformed your life and how you help it transform ours. So your training and background is in counseling. Yes, you were a licensed counselor for over 20 years animal communicator all your life, energy practitioner for over 15 years, and an artist. You look at life through a very creative lens and know that our emotions, beliefs, thoughts, relationships, environments, and diets affect our health and the health and well-being of our animal companions. In the last how many years has it been since you've created Trailblazing? Uh, we're going into the sixth year. Okay, so I had five years, yeah. So coming up on six years, uh, you created an energy system that can be utilized by anyone called Trailblazing Communications. And that was, that's a huge pillar to how you communicate with us, right? And how you communicate to your, all your animals. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about it all. First, okay. um, I want you to share how, let's start at how animals affected your life as a little kid and a little girl and then let's just transition into how you can help all of us now perfect so i um knew very early in my life that i had a unique relationship with animals like i could get really close to you know birds outside and squirrels and chipmunks at the lake would run up my leg and so i think they just always knew (laughs) that you know i was uh, a friendly, friendly person to them. But I've always felt a deep connection because, um, you know, my growing up was the, the adults weren't real present. And so the animals were always kind of my, my go-to when I needed comfort. And so, yeah, I've always had a really close relationship. I probably should have been afraid of animals at times when I wasn't, but um, I always feel that I'm going to die petting something I shouldn't. <laughs> right oh so anyway are there any animals that like you're scared of uh no uh -uh. that is amazing not really i think one of the coolest things would be out camping and be close to like a grizzly bear i think that would be really cool because i i think i think i've learned about i see animals in a different way than most people so i think um you know, should I have a healthy fear of some things? Well, yeah, probably, you know, I wouldn't go give an alligator a kiss or anything like that. But, um, but I do feel like we as humans need to understand that animals under probably understand things better than we do. And so I think that's why I could get close to animals as a young girl is because I never had ill intent towards them. And they could feel that and they knew that I would never hurt them. So Likewise, wild animals are the same. So I'm certain if I came across a grizzly bear, you know, he would instinctively know that I'm not there to hurt him in any way, you know, that kind of thing. So they they read energy, they they hear our thoughts. So, you know, if I see a grizzly bear and I'm like, oh my God, I got to find a gun and shoot it, you know, of course we're going to have some problems. Right. If I'm like, you know, I'll respect your space, you respect mine, we're cool you know, I think we'd be fine. So I, I really have learned over the years with, with animals that, you know, they do hear our thoughts. So if I am around an animal and I'm trying to fake them out, like with something, um, that's not going to work. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. So you know how you take the cat to the vet, I'm going to trick them. Right. That goes well, right, Tiffany? (laughs) 
oh my gosh, it so reminds me of Dempsey. Oh, yeah. Both of us are like, oh, he, and plus, once you try to trick them with something, <laughs> they they have that stored in their memory. Yeah. You, you need to do so many things in repetition and consistency to get them to trust you again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's think, huge. That's huge. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you think people like think like you? Not a lot of people do. A lot of people think I'm a little bit, you know, got the cog in the wheels missing a few spokes, you know, but I'm okay with that. I really am because. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I know because I, I would. <laughs> so how do you get to the, like, I just think of a typical family, <laughs> typical family that has, I mean, in our case, two dogs and three cats, but let's just say a family that has one or two animals and has never, ever, ever thought like this before that what our animals can hear our thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> you are a crazy girl. Right. Right. How do you, <laughs> how do you communicate to those people? Well, most of the time my animal communication clients either come from word of mouth. So they, you know, already maybe, kind of trust me because somebody else did. But the ones that are like first timers, usually the people that come for my, call me for my animal work, um, call because they're kind of desperate. So like they might have a cat peeing all over the house and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'll tell you a really cool story. I had a gal call me and she said, you know, I don't really believe in what you do. And I'm like, that's okay, you don't have to. And she said, the reason I'm calling is my cat keeps pooping in my husband's shoes. And if it doesn't stop, you know, he's going to get rid of my cat. And I love my cat. So can you help me? And I said, well, let's see what your cat has to say. And she's just like, and I do them over the phone, you know, so that even was like, how do you yeah. do that? Right. So um, what's really cool um, is um, animals animals will i what i've learned in my life is that i never have to worry about if somebody's going to believe in what i do or understand what i do because the animals will always bring something forward so that the the people go oh my gosh this has got to be real you know because they'll, they'll say something or do something so this cat right away i tune in energetically and kind of feel what's going on physically and health wise and I could feel there was something weird with the cat's right front leg. And I said, it feels really weird. Like it's not there. And she goes, Oh my God, how did you know that? Cause the cat had an amputated leg. Well, oh. so then I, you know, she's like, Oh my God, this is legit. Right. Right. I had it from the beginning. So then, then we asked the cat, um, we'll call him fluffy. Um, and I never share just so you know that, um, comp, you know, confidentiality is important. And I've asked this person if I can share this story, cause this is one of my favorites. Yes. So, um, so Fl I asked Fluffy, I said, why are you pooping in the shoes? And the Fluffy says, well, he talks to her and he, he swore S H I T talks to her like, you know what? And said, I'm sick of it. And it's got to stop. So I shared that with the lady and it got really quiet. And I thought, oh, she's probably gonna hang up on me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but then, you know, she started to cry and she goes, he's right. And she goes, my cat knows that? And I'm like, well, of course your cat knows that. <laughs> it listens to it just like you and cats understand our language. People ask, you know, how do they understand when you talk to them? And it's, I can talk to a German cat or a Norwegian cat, but it's, you know, there's a universal language, which is energy and you connect mind to mind. And so there's, there's a translation box, <laughs> you know, right. you do energy, you know, energetic communicating. So I said, your animal is there watching, hearing, knows how you feel, all that stuff. And your cat really cares about you and doesn't want that to happen. So that was really a cool session. That's she awesome. did get back to me about a month later and said she told her husband and he was embarrassed and they ended up going to counseling. So the cat really did an intervention and saved their marriage. And That's then I had the privilege of having this woman show up in one of my animal communication classes years later. So I got to, you know, uh, help her with that too. So it was really fun. So yeah, I, you know, animals really, um, they never do things 
to intentionally piss us off. Let's put it that way. So yeah. when people call and say, my cat's being a, a jerk or my dog's, you know, eating all my shoes to piss me off, all that stuff. There's always a reason and you, and almost always a message. Yeah, uh, that's so, well, okay. So I've, you are my go-to, you know, wh whether it's, um, patients are struggling with an animal thing or a health thing or a question or, so I'm always like, I mean, I call you the, the pet psychic, but whatever. Communicator sounds a little bit more appropriate, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You I like it. to use the word communicating because I like to kind of educate people that your animals can have a conversation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, so I think that was the, you remember Aspen? Yeah, remember Aspen? that's how we met. I know. Yeah, so that we meet the coolest people through fur. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, so you've obviously communicated with all of our animals now, but um, I remember, I mean, I was, so I don't know, I mean, that was probably what, 12 years ago, so, something a really long time ago, and I needed to send you a picture of him. Yeah. It was our white Persian, right? Yeah. And I remember being downstairs in our exercise room and I was laying on the floor because I was trying to kind of hide. I'm like, oh God, if Craig hears this conversation, <laughs> he's going to be like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Well, Craig is very, that, that never did happen because he completely is um, intuitive and understands. They always have a message. But I remember being on the phone and I'm, I, I would consider myself uh, energy communicator, right? Right. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know how to like verbalize and quantify it, but I remember being on the phone thinking like, this is crazy shit. I sent her a picture of Aspen and now she's given me his whole life. Cause then it was, um, we didn't know where he came from and he was scared of a few things. So he was tentative and he would, was, was it jumping into bags or something? I don't know. There, there were multiple. Yeah. I think there were multiple things. I think he had a problem with urinating too, didn't he at times? I think he maybe did. I actually. think he remember that. I, and it was I when he was young. Yeah. It I was think when Tater that's... came. That's why. Yeah. It was when Tater came. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I've done multiple different sessions with you on whether it's just energy communicating or um, behavioral issues and health issues. Um, Aspen had major health issues. Dempsey was a rescue pup that was um, beaten by dogs. And so can you just kind of describe the differences in maybe not necessarily your sessions, but yeah, I guess so. Your sessions on if you're communicating, like let's just say somebody has a question about a rescue. Prime example, where are these, where are these guys came from? We've done a ton of sessions on our rescue pups with you. Um, so it gives those people more of a sense of understanding, right? Okay. Um, yeah. So just, can you just kind of break that down a little bit? Well, when somebody reaches out for an animal session, it's usually either because of a health issue, a behavioral issue, or, you know, a lot of times end of life wondering, you know, decisions to make all those kinds of things. So when somebody reaches out, I have to kind of decide is this a communication session? Like, do they need to know something from the animal or know about it? Or if it's a health issue, um, typically I don't like to start with a communication with a health issue just because I've had very few animals that can tell me, well, I, I need this or I have, you know, I have cancer or whatever. They don't typically, um, Animals look at time. They look at all these things very differently than us. They don't diagnose. They don't have a name for it. They'll just tell me I feel low energy or, you know, I can feel what's going on in their body, that kind of stuff. But what I typically like to start with a, the trailblazing communications tool that I created, because when I go in and connect with their energy, with the intention of, you know, locating, identifying, shifting, you know, stuck energy, you know, I can get a little bit of a sense of, what's going on by what comes up like i might need to clear something in their kidneys or i might bladder might come up or emotional things might come up those kinds of things and that all creates energy imbalances as you well know as a chiropractor you know stuck energy creates problems so 
Yep, exactly. Stuck energy, stored energy, stagnant energy, all that kind of stuff. So basically I'm, I'm, you know, tapping into their body with the tool and, you know, finding out where this stuff is and move it. So after I do that, um, then I can kind of have an idea what physically and more in depth might be going on. And then we can talk about um, what to do about that. You know, is it more energy sessions? Uh, is it going to the vet? You know, uh, I, all those things. So um, I, I really feel like people uh, that animals would really like us to start looking at their health from a more holistic viewpoint. Cause you know, going to the vet isn't always uh, their first choice <laughs> just because yep. it's scary, you know, and, and, you know, there's usually medication involved and, I don't know too many animals that are happy about taking medications because they feel altered. You know, they feel, yeah, they don't feel themselves or whatever. So I think, you know, using energy or homeopathics, oils, I, chiropractic for animals, all that stuff, uh, acupuncture, they definitely prefer that kind of stuff. So um, I think- What are your go-tos? Like if people are just looking at um, starting to raise their animals a little bit more holistically when yep. it's been more medically. Yep. Like who, do you, who do you follow? Who are your people? Well, that what, I, what I typically do, Tiffany, is I really, um, I really talk about looking at their diet first okay. because, um, you know, we have been marketed to and taught that there's such a thing as pet food and people food. And that makes me laugh because I'm like, I don't, do you know any pet food farms? I mean, what is pet food, right? Where's, where's the pet food farmers? I've never seen them. They're looking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, oh. pet, pet yeah. food farms are these awful factories that create this dry, yeah. whatever it is. What is it? You know, it's, it's processed. It right, doesn't right. matter if you start with filet mignon, by the time you cook the crap out of it and put it in a dried crunchy thing, you know, you're pretty much feeding Cheetos. So, I mean, so I start with that, you know, and talk about good food. They should have real food just like us. And there's lots of easy to use um, raw food where you don't have to have bleeding things on your counter. Like you can do the freeze dried and that's not over processed. So I talk about diet. I think diet is huge. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, my vet, you know, prescribe this. And I always, you know, I don't diss vets because, you know, I, they're doing a great job, but they're not trying to communicate. And the other right, thing, right. like Western medicine doctors, they're not trained in nutrition. Right. You know, right. they don't get a day of nutrition. So um, I say, if you, if your vet is talking nutrition, he's, he or she has learned that on their own. Got it, got it. So, you know, the, the foods that they, they recommend, they are trained about those foods from the reps. So science yeah, yeah. diet and IMS and stuff, they're trained by the reps. So, you know, they're going to say da 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 right, So right. in defense of the vets, they don't get that in their training and they, usually don't have time to learn extra things. They're pretty busy. So as far as nutrition goes, I think you got to do your own research and you got to, you know, really re look at all the ingredients in, in the bag. Can you spell them? Can you say, pronounce them? And if you can't, you probably should run from them. <laughs> so, well, with my animals, I really like for my dogs, um, there's a product called Sojo's and it's made in Minnesota. So um, it's, you know, it's a, it's not a massive company and um, it's freeze dried. So they start, it has the meats, fruits and vegetables and the, you know, everything that they need for a balanced diet in that they have a puppy formula, they have, um, and then they have uh, an, the, they have lamb, chicken and beef, no lamb, turkey and beef. Okay. And um, you just add water and it brings it back to life. So, you know, it's real food and it's, you know, I think, you know, feeding that is good for my cat. I use a, a product called primal and it's frozen um, organ meat. You know, cats need a lot of protein, a lot of meat. So it's organ meat and it has some other things in there, but it's a, it's a balanced diet. And you just 
we just take the frozen chunks out and put them in the fridge and then they're so easy to feed, but you're feeding raw food, real food. Right. And right. so nutrition is number one. Number two, we have to look at how, how much, how many chemicals we use with our animals. So let's start with flea and tick collars. Those are the most toxic things you could put around somebody's neck. Right. There's a warning on there. Keep your kids away. Well, if it's toxic to your kids, it's toxic to your dog or cat. I've seen cats lick a collar on a dog and be dead within minutes, you know? So we have to quit doing that. There's natural things for that. I use essential oils, you know, just a, uh, there's, you know, some certain things. I am working on an ebook that will be out before too long with all this stuff in there. People are, you know, curious. Whoa. Yeah. Cause I end up talking about this a lot in my sessions and I'd yep. rather just give them the book and let's talk to the animal. So, Absolutely. so, you know, the whole, uh, essential oils for that. And then we have the heartworm little cocktail of chemicals we, sh we put down their throat monthly. That's, that's not good either. So I adopted a dog, fostered, and then it was foster fail, adopted a dog that was stage four heartworm positive many, many years ago. And it was a German shepherd and she was so skinny. You could, you could see her bones and her organs. I mean, she was, she was in bad shape. And the vet wanted to start treatment on her. He didn't think she'd make it, but he wanted to start treatment on her right away. And I asked about the treatment and they actually use rat poison. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Like chemo. It's like the animal version of chemo. It's rat poison. And I knew she wouldn't make it through that. So um, did some research and found a product called Heartworm Free, which is all homeopathic. So it's all natural. And it's, it's made by the company Amber Technologies. Mm -hmm. And it's, you can use it as a preventative, but it also heals heartworms. So we use that with that stage four positive dog. And when I left the vet saying I wasn't going to do the rat poison, he laughed at me and said, well, your dog will die. And I said, I don't know. We'll see. I, you know. And so we started the heartworm free and within nine weeks, they tell you to go in um, and have a, another test done for baby microfilaria, they call baby heartworm. So I went in and did that and the, I went to a different vet and the vet said, why do you want to do that? I'll just do the heartworm test. I said, nope, I want you to test for microfilaria because that if there's no babies, then it means the adult worms are dead. So she did the test and she goes, oh, there isn't any. Why, why are you doing this? So I told her what I was doing and she was like, oh my gosh. So when they do the rat poison, they also have to lock them and immobilize them for six weeks in a cage. Can you imagine a German shepherd immobilized for six weeks in a cage? Oh my gosh. And the reason they do that is because if they have activity and those chunks of worms when they're dying moves around, it could heart attack. Yeah. So the homeopathic heartworm free product dissolves the worms. So you don't have to constrict them. It's no pain. It's no chemicals. It's all natural. So that I use as a preventative as well. So there's another chemical gone. Now we're going to talk about vaccines and people are probably going to be like, Oh my God, this is the hot topic, right? Absolutely. I'm not saying don't vaccinate, but I'm saying after they get their first round of shots when they're young, um, you have that, you can request a titer test, which is a blood draw. And they can blood draw for any of the things that they need to vaccinate for to see if their immunities are, you know, where their immunities are at. And if their immunities are there, they don't need the shot. So you're just putting more chemicals and more mayhem into their system, you know? Right. So all the things I mentioned, these animals come to me for help because they have health issues. I can feel the digestive stuff in their stomach, I can feel the low energy and the autoimmune stuff and the yeasty stuff all starting from all this mayhem that we do in their bodies. So I'd say start, you know, detoxing these poor, poor animals. And there's some, there's yeah. another product from Amber Technologies called um, Detox Gold. And I use that um, twice a year to detox um, my animals. It's uh -huh. a homeopathic detoxes their liver and all that stuff. And um, if you keep, um, you know, their systems clear, don't use the chemicals, use the natural stuff. You know, your dog could live for a long, long time and you pr will save money at the vet. This stuff all, you know, maybe costs a little bit more, maybe not than the other stuff. I don't, I haven't compared lately, but you'll save money at the vet. 
And we Absolutely. all know that's pretty expensive just to walk in the door. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's just like humans, right? You know, I, mm -hmm. I can just attest to this is yeah. garbage in, garbage out. And mm -hmm. not only, I mean, and now we have all these conscious thoughts and subconscious thoughts and, yeah. but, but the, the medical world is about vaccination, medication, treatment of any symptom, right? Yep. Not ever taking into consideration what the why? needs and why, and then why? Yeah. Because once one thing is off, how you do one thing is how that body's going to do everything and they're going to yep. start expressing disease. And I mean, and, um, Majority and, of disease. You and I both know, um, Tiffany, that, you know, energy imbalances start with emotions and yep. it does with animals too. And the other interesting dynamic that goes on with animals that people aren't aware of, people say to me, how can I take the best care of my animal? And I say, take the best care of yourself because, you know, when animals are out in the wild, they sync up energetically with their pack, herd, whatever they are. And they do that because their survival depends on it. Their, their pack or herd is only as strong as the weakest link. So if they sync up, you know, they're helping everybody and everybody will do better. So when we bring these animals into our homes, they do that with us. So energetically, they're syncing up with us. So when I do an animal session and there's, you know, um, I worked with a, a woman and her cat and her cat had diabetes and you know she goes what can I do for my cat and so I asked the cat or you know checked in found out who the cat was sinking energetically sinking up with and it was her and I said you know your cat has diabetes and you know they they sink up energetically so someone in your house either has that energy coming on or already has diabetes themselves and she goes oh my god that would be me I bet she goes, I need to, you know, and she right away could totally see that it was her. So it was really cool. She needed to lose weight. She needed to clean up her diet. And she did that because of that session. So I always say that, you know, those animals bring an awareness to our home when we uh -huh. check in what's going on. So she got back to me several months later and she said, I want to tell you my cat's um, blood sugars are normal. And I've lost 45 pounds and da -da, and she was so excited, but the cat was syncing up with her. So, you know, their health issues are a heads up to us. How do we know what animals syncing up to us? Or how do we know, I mean, is that a... Um, I actually use my trailblazing and have a syncing chart. So I just go to it and say, uh -huh. you know, who, are, who are they syncing up with? And they'll tell me, but you know, the trailblazing stuff that I'm talking about for communication and for checking in and for clearing is something that is a tool that I created for everybody to use. You don't have to be, have any background. You don't have to have done anything else in energy. It's super easy to learn, super easy to use. And it's a great tool you can use with not only your animals, but yourself, your kids, your family. I mean, yeah. So there's, there's lots of applications for it, but I always encourage people if they're really wanting to, you know, stay on top of their health or animals health, it's a great tool. And mm -hmm. if you need to go to the chiropractor, it'll tell you. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So. So how do we come like as a family and we're busy and we're distracted yep. and we're in chaos and yep. did it, did it down the road, right? Mm -hmm. How do we start to get in? tune with them like how if if they if somebody has never even thought that animals communicate <laughs> yeah how does somebody start like how do you start to see them yeah that's a good question i always like to have people okay so when you when you communicate with animals you're actually communicating heart to heart so i always tell people go in your living room sit in a chair get really calm take some deep breaths get grounded Imagine dropping your attention from your head to your heart and imagine sending energy out through your heart. Like you want to send a message to your animal. And I say, get in that space best you can. It might take a little practice. It might not work the first time, mm -hmm. but imagine your cat or dog is sitting, you know, across the room from you and just think the thought, if you can hear me fluffy, look at me right now and send that That's through. Cool. 
and see what happens. Practice that a few times. And yeah, um, yeah. because I've told people to do that and they're like, oh my God, they looked. Because <laughs> <laughs> here's the deal. We are all born being able to communicate with animals. So when I mentor or teach people to do that, I'm actually helping them remember. Yeah, right. And which is why I said busy chaotic because it's not yep. like we don't know how to. Right. And it you takes, don't. you know, if it's a muscle you haven't used, just like if you haven't been to the gym in a while and you go, you know, pound some weights, um, you know, it's going to take a while before you start seeing definition and your muscles get stronger. Same with your intuitive or your, you know, this as right. well. So, um, and I think the biggest thing that stands in the way of people being able to do it is, you know, they just don't think they can. And so, you know, my, when I work with people, it's like, yeah, you can, and I'll help you get there. Help you remember. And, awesome. Yeah. So you, um, you mentor people? Yes, I do. Okay. Yep. And yep. is it people that go through trailblazing or do you do? No, well, when I mentor, when I mentor people, so I do communication and healing with animals. And when people are interested in learning, they really want to learn the whole package. So when I do mentor, um, I do ask them to have, you know, be on board with trailblazing while we do that, because if they want to learn what I do, that's, that's a big part of it. So um, I, I'm mentoring a couple gals. I have a, a year long mentorship and I'm mentoring a couple gals. We're halfway through and it's been, it's the first time I've done a year long thing and I'm really enjoying it. And they're doing, oh my gosh, they are so amazing. Like we, uh, you know, I have I guests, animals come on and they, they communicate and I, you know, help them, you know, dig deeper and all that stuff. But anyways, it's so fun when they do it because it's like, oh my God, I heard that. I got that message. Because right. animals have a lot of wisdom to share. They, yeah. they don't just, yep, nope. They don't, you know, they, uh, they've helped with business, people with businesses. They've helped parent. They've helped, they help with everything. I've had animals give parenting, like, oh my gosh, don't let your daughter hang around X, Y, Z because she's not a good influence. They're like, how oh, does the dog know that? <laughs> you know, they're there. They know they're, they're part of the family. I've had, I had a really cool um, uh, session with uh, uh, two people that worked together. I didn't know what work they did, but they had me talk to the dog one time. I can't remember what was going on, but um years later the gal part of this reached out to me because the gentleman had passed away and it was his dog and the dog ended up going to you know some someone in his family and she wanted to know how the dog was doing and I normally wouldn't do that because you you know they talk about their family stuff but I said I'd be happy to tune in just around questions with you and it was so cool because I'd never asked them what they did for work and when I connected with the dog and she wanted to know how the dog was doing. She said, I'm doing fine, but I really miss working with you guys. And um, she said how the dog asked the gal how her ideas were coming. And she said, well, they're a little slow. I really, you know, I really feel off. And the dog said, I was giving you all those ideas. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I said, what do you guys do? And she said, we're in advertising. So the dog was giving them all these ideas were popping in their head and you know so she was oh my gosh I totally could see it can see that now you know so they you know um I have a horse who was a big part of the development of trailblazing helping me I remember yep so, <laughs> yeah and I mean, I, that's one of the one of the most inspiring things about like your work with this is when I um when we would work together that's when you were starting to describe a little bit about mm -hmm. all of your ideas, all of your content, all of your modules, all of your books, everything comes from this horse. <laughs> horse and yeah. And yeah. And, all and of everything, all yeah, of them. Yeah. Right? But he, you know, it's so cool. Cause my office, when I look out my window here, I can see my horses. They can come, you know, I see them. Oh. And I'd be working on something and be stuck. And then I could feel, and I'd look and my horse would be standing there and he'd be like, Da -da -da -da, give me the, what I was working on. So like he, you know, That's he could hear me out the barn, you know, kind of. So he'd help me get through the stuck spot. So, you know, and I tell people that they think, well, 
Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I know. But so I think, you know, fine. If you don't believe it, you're missing the magic. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't have animals, like, is there always like a chosen animals out there to communicate to you, or? Well, tell me one person that hasn't had a weird encounter with a wild animal, like a squirrel coming and sitting on their, you know, looking yeah. at their or a bird flying weird or you know whatever right. um one of my students just had a friend of hers driving on the highway and an owl hit her car and it didn't die so she had wrapped it up well the owl had a message for her and so this one of my students got the message from the owl to the person and it was about a life change she needed to do and it so resonated and the woman was in tears it resonated so much so animals will do stuff like that to get us a message they yeah. just so if you don't have your own pets and you're open to help from animals if you set that intention you will have animals mm -hmm. come around in some way mm. yeah oh i love that mm -hmm. see this is just a just a reminder that we're number one energy is forever <laughs> we're never alone you know no, i think not. so much um trust faith whatever the, that word is that yep. when you know you're not alone hope that's the word when you know you're I, not alone I think it is hope and i think a lot of people today in this busy world feel like they're alone and i think you know yep. if you could just if you could just switch your perception on the animal thing and if you have animals, you know, they're there for you. If you right. don't, you know, um, I've had, I live out in the country now. And when I lived in the city, I even had weird things. But out here, there's even more opportunities for animals to come with messages. And I just love that. I had a, in the middle of the day, I had a, a like a black wolf come through the field, huge walk through the field. People are like, oh, are you scared? I'm like, no, I knew he was there for a reason. He had a message, you know. Had a message i haven't seen him since you know wow. stuff like that. so yeah i'm why be afraid you know they're right yeah he's not coming yeah, which is a, just a completely different perspective than the majority yeah. I, mean, I i can come from a bella's a rescue you know she's eight months she's a pity mix and oh my goodness how much stigma there is around being a pity it being dangerous and like wow oh. how did we how did we get there that is that's coming it's, from an owner <laughs> yeah. the the animals if they're dangerous it's because the person has trained them to be that way yeah. or they've abused them to be that way and there's no breed out there that is born mean there just isn't yeah there just yeah. isn't no I and you know, unfortunately, there's a certain personality that's drawn to some of those uh, bully dogs, they call them, because, you know, they're, they're wanting to accentuate something or hide, behind, you know, yeah. I'm not saying everybody who does that, but they're, you know, the ones that mistreat them and dog fight them or do this with them or make them mean, um, you know, they're a certain breed of, of person that, you know, is totally using that animal for whatever for themselves entertainment or to extend their you know protect them from their own fears i don't know but there's you know right. it's, it's animal it's human driven oh yeah mm -hmm. i know it's super super interesting when you're in the middle of it i mean we just had a, an example of um needing to have an insurance policy against because we have a 37 percent pit bull what I mean that's real. That's out there, and and it's highlighted. Well, there, are, there are some states that won't allow them. Yes, I. Right? Yeah. Some cities in North Dakota that don't allow them. You know that big case with Michael Vick and all his his mayhem with those poor animals. You know they rehomed a lot of them, and they were beautiful pets, even being through all the stuff that he put them through. Yeah. yeah. So that, that you know, like resilience. Animals can heal and forgive. Animals actually animals forgive all the time but sometimes they'll have stuck trauma like a human and it'll be hard for them to trust and i don't blame them you know some some of them go through some horrific stuff at the hands of humans absolutely yeah but that can all be healed mm -hmm. right yeah. no, knowing that there's always um 
yeah, always a solution. I just need them to work. Is. But you might have to look at alternative things because I, I don't, there's not a pharmaceutical that will heal trauma. You know, no. it's going to have to be something energetic or something to, you know, like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if anyone wants to reach you, um, TaraArville.com, right? Yep. Yep. Trailblazingcommunications.com. Yep. Do you have, um, you have a Facebook page? Yep. Facebook, Trailblazing Communications, and also Instagram. Yep. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're starting to put out, um, I love this, probably in the last three months, what you're putting out. Um, I think more resources that people can find because, I mean, the, the Google is huge. We don't yeah. even really know where to start if you would think about like a holistic vet or a holistic tutor. Yeah. Yeah. It, the holistic essential oils, I don't know. People, yeah. it's... Uh, I have a I have a, a group that if people want to learn more about this stuff I'm talking about it's I think I call it animal wisdom it's a Facebook group they can okay. ask to be a part of that and I just I just share this stuff um, because I really feel like it's important that every animal get a fighting chance to have a decent life and I think you know we just need to redo some of the things that we've been taught to do to so they don't get sick. Right, you know, right. And that kind of stuff. So, um, so I just awesome. share that stuff. Um, you know, I'm not tr looking to make people clients. I just want to educate people. So I, I took that platform to share. Yeah, that that's stuff. probably where I've seen a lot of that stuff, actually, now that you say that. I'm okay. Heard, yeah. So. yeah. Oh, your wisdom is so good. Thank you, dear. People need to know this so bad. <laughs> well, I think really animals are, are going to be the ones that help us turn this world around. Mm -hmm. You know, I really do. Yeah. So I think yep. if you, if you don't believe in what I'm talking about, just sit with your animal in a little bit different way and see how they change, how they respond differently. Um, I want to say one more thing. Um, I just, today I was checking messages on Facebook and somebody had, I can't believe all the lost animals that are out there. How, how, I just don't understand that. But anyway, somebody said, oh, my dog left again. It's lost again. And my dog's name is Farting. And I'm like, you named your dog Farting? How disrespectful. I had, uh, I had someone uh, have me communicate with their cat, and they named it Shithead. And the cat said, that is the awful name, and I don't want to be called that anymore. So he navigated a new name for that animal immediately and the animal's behavior changed. Yes. So think about if your name was fart, farting or diarrhea or butthead or, I mean, come on, really? <laughs> how well, how good is your life going to be, right? <laughs> oh, you don't have a chance. <laughs> oh, no, man, who's going to take you serious if your name's farting? I mean, come on. Oh my gosh, there's so many things that we do or think or say without thinking that anyone else, we just don't think energies are connected. People Bottom don't line. think animals understand. That's no. the first mistake. And they yep. do. So if you just start, if you just start thinking they understand everything and think about, okay, think of your animal's name. Think of what you say around them. I mean, you say, oh my gosh, that dog is so dumb. He can't figure out how to. Right whatever well right. you heard that you heard yeah. that <laughs> and now he starts to believe he's dumb so exactly. just like when you if you talk about your kids poorly they're going to behave that way and the animals do exactly. too so just start thinking that they understand everything and then see what you might want to shift good start a good start thank you so much for listening and being willing to go all in ditch the excuses and the comfort zones and make a decision that nothing can stop you. You can find the show notes below and I'd love for you to share, subscribe, and rate this podcast, but only if you love it.